So this this is something which we've been announcing for a few weeks now, and we're super excited that it's it's finally uh, we finally were able to do the Haven. The festival will kickstart with a celebration on Friday, uh, which is on the 15th of July, where there's going to be a 12-hour kirtan uh, happening at the temple. and celebration at Central Island and on the 17th as well. So a big, big weekend, uh, about a month away from we're here right now. Uh, so we, we need lots and lots of help from in terms of donating or sponsoring for the festival or if you'd like to volunteer and help out in certain services, you are most welcome to do so. Uh, we have a board on the front uh, which shows about the various sponsorship opportunities for the festival. So if you'd like to support this festival financially based on your means, you are most welcome to do so. We will be able to issue uh, a receipt as well. And uh, of course, in the coming weeks, you'll be hearing more updates about uh, how we are planning to celebrate the festival, who are the confirmed guests, and a lot of more uh, fun information which, uh, which is going to be happening over the next few weeks. So without further ado, what we're going to do is we'll get started with our uh, regular spiritual discourse. We usually start at 6.30, which is running a little bit late. Uh, but this will be a discourse for about 40 minutes. And the topic for today is on the mood of service. So as, as you all know, the next month or so is going to be uh, involving a lot of devotees, a lot of volunteers doing their bit, doing their service uh, for Lord Jagannath. Today we're going to hear on this mood of service. And it's going to be facilitated by none other than our visiting monk, visiting guest, Bruhan Madanga Prabhu. So a brief bio background about Bruhan Madanga Prabhu. He's, he's been originally from Santa Cruz, California. And he joined the Krishna House as a brand ambassador of this Krishna House project. Krishna House is an initiative done to bring newcomers, new people uh, to the process of Krishna consciousness where they get to stay in the ashram, stay at the temple, attend morning programs, attend the Bhagavatam classes, Bhagavatam classes, all of this in a way that's very uh, helpful for them to understand what the process of bhakti is like. So he's doing a similar initiative here in Toronto called the Bhakti Academy. So we currently have about 10 to 15 students, correct Prabhu? 10, 10 to 15? Yeah, 10. 10 students staying at the temple, attending morning program every day, attending morning Bhagavatam classes, serving at the temple. And this is all being led by our very special guest, Prahat Pradaka Prabhu. So he's been leading this initiative for many years now, and it's something we're trying in Toronto for the first time. And uh, he's, he's been connected with a lot of the devotees staying at the temple. So he'll be here for a few more months, and we thought today he will speak on this topic. Of service. So please join me in welcoming Prahat Pradaka Prabhu. Sing this ancient uh, prayer. It's called Jaya Radha Madhava. So if you 
have it sung before we have the words here, you can sing along.
So tonight we'll be reading from the Bhagavad Gita. This is an ancient text, over 5,000 years old. I'm sure most of you in the room know about it. Maybe there's a few who don't. And this is a very famous verse from the Bhagavad Gita. And so we will uh, reverse a little bit of the purport from our founder, Acharya Srila Prabhupada. And then we'll have a little discussion on what is the mood of service. And then we'll have some time for discussion and questions at the end. So we'll do this call and response. This is the Sanskrit. Raja Vidya Raja Bhujam Avitram Idam Uttamam Pratyakshavagamam Dharnam Susukam Kartum Avyayam Raja Vidya Raja Bhujam Avitram idam uttamam Pratyakshavagamam dharyam Susukam kartum avyayam So you can chant. Raja Vidya Raja Bhujam Pavitram idam uttamam Pavitram idam uttamam So it didn't exactly go as planned. <laughs> Here we go, yes. Then. perception of the self by realization, it is the perfection of religion, it is everlasting, and it is joyfully performed. So we'll read just some of the purpose, quite long, so we'll skip down towards the end. Okay. 
Can we have a reader? Can somebody help me read? I think a little far. Maybe someone closer? Somebody like to read? Yes. The process of devotional service is a very happy one. Susukha. Why? Devotional service consists of Sharam Kirtanam Vishnu. So one can very simply hear the chanting of the glories of the Lord, uh, or can attend philosophical lectures on the transcendental knowledge given by Bharatiya Acharyas. Simply by sitting, one can learn. Then one can eat the remnants of the food offered to the Lord, uh, nice palatable dishes. In ev every stage, uh, devotional service is joyful. One can execute devotional service even in the most uh, poverty stricken condition. The Lord says, Patram Pushpam Param Toyam. He is ready to accept from the devotee any kind of offering, never mind what, even a leaf a flower, a bit of fruit, or a little water, which are all available in every part of the world, it can be offered by any person regardless of social position, and will be accepted if offered with love. There are many in instances in, in history. Simply by tasting the Tulsi leaf offered to the lotus feet of the Lord, a great sage like uh, Sanat Kumar became great devotees. Therefore, the devotional process is very nice and it can be executed in a happy mood. God accepts only the love with which things are offered to him. Do you want me to get to It is said here that this devotional service is eternally existing. It is not as, uh, it is not as the Mayavadi philosophers claim. Although they uh, sometimes take to so-called devotional service, their idea is that, that as long as they are not liberated, they will continue the devotional service, but at the end, when they become liberated, they will become one with God. Such temporary time-seeking devotional service is not acceptable as pure devotional service. Actual devotional service continues even after liberation. When the devotee goes to the spiritual planet, in the kingdom of God, he is also engaged there in service, in serving the Supreme Lord. He does not try to become one with the Supreme Lord. Thank you. Thank you. So, offer our respects. Before speaking, we offer our respects to our spiritual master. And sing along with me if you know this verse. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Jnana Shahakaya Chakshurum Vitam Jnana Asmai Shri This verse says that I was born in the darkest of ignorance and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. And therefore, I offer my obeisances unto him. So, wanted to share three points on the mood of service based on this verse in the Bhagavad Gita. And that is, service is eternal, it is joyful, and it is easily performed. So Srila Prabhupada, who translated and wrote the purports for this Bhagavad Gita as it is. He explains here that uh, devotional service is eternally existing. It is not something temporary. So there's a difference in selfless service and uh, selfish service where we want to get something from our service. And so I wanted to explain that idea If we are doing, if we're coming to church, coming to the temple, uh, so that we can get something, get some money in return, we give some money and we want to get more money back, or we, we offer um, 
prayers and and are desirous of material things. Like if there's the, the common Christian prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Srila Prabhupada said, this is not love of God, but it's love of bread. <laughs> so, of course it's better than just trying to make ends meet on our, on our own in an atheistic lifestyle. It's better if we need something, then yes, we should go to God for that. But we're really missing the point that um, ultimately what's going to satisfy us is having a loving relationship with God of give and take. And this is like when a child grows up, they rather than just taking from the parent, they realize maybe I should give back. Maybe I should do something for this person who has selflessly given to me for my whole life. And so in the same way, a mature spiritualist thinks that God is providing everything at every moment, so shouldn't I give something back? And if we have this self-serving mentality that I just want to get something from my spiritual practice, then our spiritual practice will be short-lived. It will not be eternal, like this verse explains. So we'll, we'll get something, maybe we'll get some money, or some good health, or a nice house, or something. And uh, we'll be happy for a moment, but then eventually we'll be dissatisfied. There's a nice story from the Srimad Bhagavatam I wanted to share on this point. Lord Shiva, he's said to be very easily pleased. His name is Ashutosh. And so if you ask Lord Shiva for something, he'll give it to you quite easily. And so there was this uh, demon named uh, Vrikasura. And he was doing very intense sacrifices to try to get a power from Lord Shiva. He wanted to get a mystical ability so that he can uh, blow someone's head up. He blow someone's head up by just touching it. And so he was doing uh, the, the sacrifices quite intense, even taking off his own flesh and offering it to the fire. And he eventually was going to offer his own head into the fire. And Lord Shiva came. He said, okay, I'll give you what you want. And so Vrikasura said, I want the ability to blow someone's head up just by touching it. And Lord Shiva is Ashutosh. He's very easily pleased. So he gave this benediction to Vrikasura. And then what did Vrikasura do? He wanted to test out his new power. <laughs> when you get a new toy or a new car, what do you want to do? <laughs> you want to play with it. So Vrikasura wanted to use his new ability on the only person there. He tried to um, kill Lord Shiva with this new power. And so Lord Shiva ran. He ran all, all through the, the universe looking for different uh, um, powers, that be, powers that be and approaching them and asking for help. Nobody was able to help him. Brahma, the creator of the universe, couldn't help him. Indra, the king of the heavenly worlds, couldn't help him. And so finally, uh, Lord Shiva went to uh, the spiritual world and he was looking for Vishnu. And so he found uh, Vishnu in the form of this uh, young brahmachari, this young monk, dressed in a deerskin cloth with his uh, walking stick. And so uh, Lord Shiva found him, and uh, Vrikasura saw this boy, who was actually Vishnu, but he looked like just a little monk. And uh, so, this monk was Vishnu, he, as this little boy, he was saying, um, you know, I've heard that uh, Lord Shiva is uh, kind of deceitful. You should, you should just test out this power. Why don't, you, why don't you see? And then, when you see that the power doesn't work, then you can prove that Lord Shiva is a liar. And so, Vrikasura <laughs> touched his own head <laughs> and lost it. 
So this is this is a story of temporary material gains from our spiritual practice. If we are uh, worshiping just to get some quick benediction, some quick result, then we won't be, meet a very nice end. Our service actually is meant to be eternal, not that we just get something and then and then uh, we just want to enjoy that thing and, and lose the relationship with the person we were seeking the reward from. So that's the aspect of eternal service. Devotional service is also very joyfully performed. So uh, Krishna by nature is, is called Satchit Ananda. He is full of bliss, he is eternal, he's full of all knowledge. By nature, this is uh, who Krishna is. And we also, as small parts of Krishna, we have the same quality. We're, we're filled with bliss by nature. But the problem is that we get covered by material energy. We have desires for material things and then we can't access that blissful nature within ourselves. And so if we reconnect with Krishna, our lost relationship with God, then we can resume our natural joyful position. And you can experience this very easily. It's actually a scientific process. This is not uh, just sentiment that uh, you offer some prayers and then you feel good and there's not much more to it, but there's, it's actually a scientific process that uh, when you connect with the Supreme, then you are connected with your uh, eternal, natural position and you feel filled with happiness. And we experience that every day if, if you sincerely practice, especially with kirtan. Chanting the, the names of God is uh, the process of, of enlightenment for this age. And so there's, there's this story also from the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's another ancient text, and describes the life of uh, the most recent incarnation of God. And they were cleaning a temple, it's called the Gundicha Temple. And this actually happened before the Ratha Yatra, which we're going to have next month, where we take these deities, Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, we take them out onto the streets, have a big festival. And so before that festival, Lord Chaitanya and his uh, devotees, they were cleaning the Gundicha Temple. And uh, they, they cleaned it so well, they went through and cleaned out first of all the big sticks, all of the major things. Then they went through again and cleaned out all the little dust particles. Then they brought hundreds of pots of water and they washed the, they put so much water in the temple that it was like there were rivers flowing outside in the streets. And they, they had so many water pots and they were going to get so much water from the river that the different devotees were bumping into each other and breaking the pots. And so actually they needed hundreds of people to go get more pots because there were so many colliding and breaking as they were intensely trying to clean the temple. And they were, they were in such a joyful state when they were talking to each other, they were only using the word Krishna. When they would ask for a pot of water, they'd say, Krishna, Krishna. And if they were giving one, they'd say, Krishna, Krishna. And every, everything they were just using, they weren't using any other word but Krishna. And uh, actually, Lord Chaitanya, he was so happy during this service that he was actually crying, tears of joy, and he was washing the temple with his own tears. And uh, of course, there's much more than lots of chanting that ensued, like we just did before this. So uh, uh, devotional service is extremely joyful. It's, we get blissful just by contacting Krishna, because Krishna is full of bliss. And so we see that in uh, the activities of, of Lord Chaitanya. We, we can experience it in our own life when we do kirtan in the temple here. And then the final aspect that uh, came out, Srila Prabhupada touched on it in the purport, is that 
Devotional service is very easy. It's extremely easy to do. In any position of life, you can offer some service. So even if you can't come to the temple, you can still uh, chant at home. You can offer some food. Um, you can, because our Creator has given us so many nice things to eat, and so naturally, if we have gratitude, we'll give it back. And so there's an offering process you can do, and that is an easy way to perform devotional service. Krishna says in the Gita that a patram pushpam palam to yam, that you can offer me a leaf, a flower, a fruit, a water, I will accept it. Even if you have very little means. And in fact, even if you have no means at all, there's a, a story of this uh, Brahman who was not very well off, but he was peaceful living in the forest, doing meditation, doing breathing practices, and he would meditate. This is called Manasa Seva, his service in the mind. So even if we can't do something physically, we can just offer service in our own mind. That's how easy devotional service is. And so this uh, Brahman, he was meditating in his mind very elaborately, making offerings to Krishna. He was offering all sorts of wonderful things, uh, clothing and helmets and uh, food and water he would in his mind he would have gold and silver water pots and he would go to all the holy rivers and he would collect water and bring it back for offering all in his mind and he was also meditating on making a sweet rice preparation milk and rice and sugar very simple preparation so he was making this sweet rice in his mind and he was waiting for it to cool down because it should be uh, eaten cold, ideally. And so he, in his mind, he put his finger in the sweet rice to test if it was cooled down yet. And he burned his finger in his meditation. And then he snapped out of it and he was sitting in the forest there and he looked and his finger was actually burned. And so what happened then is in the spiritual world, uh, Vishnu was sitting with uh, the uh, Lakshmis, the goddesses of fortune in the spiritual world. And uh, Vishnu smiled humorously. And then uh, the Lakshmis, the goddesses of fortune, asked him, what are, you, what are you laughing about? And he didn't say anything, but he sent uh, an airplane down, a spiritual airplane, to the material world and to pick up this Brahmana and take him back to the spiritual world. Wow. He, was so, he was so pleased by this, even just this mental offering. So devotional service is extremely easy, it's extremely joyful, it is meant to be done eternally, and, and uh, these are some of the simple points I wanted to share with all of you. And hopefully, there's some thoughts churning. I want to hear if there are any uh, questions or realizations that you all would like to share at this point. We can take another five or 10 minutes and, and hear some discussion. Thank you all for your kind attention. Yes. How do you, or what are the facts associated with which you will 
elaborate that science? Mm. Can you elaborate more on the science? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. So she's asking, uh, what is the science that I'm describing? In a scientific experiment, there is first a hypothesis, and then one does an experiment based on that hypothesis, right? And uh, once you get results, then you can determine whether or not the hypothesis was correct. So in that way, uh, there, is, there are descriptions that uh, when you engage in this process of chanting the names of God, it purifies the heart, and the unwanted things, the anartas in our heart, they go away, and they disappear. And so uh, great sages in the past have done this, and their experiences are recorded. Their own scientific experiments are recorded. And so we take that as um, the hypothesis. And so then we go through and do the experiment ourselves. We engage in chanting, and then we get results. Or maybe we don't, but we won't know if we don't try. And so this is the challenge that our founder, Acharya Srila Prabhupada, when he came here in 1976, I believe, he gave an arrival address. And he stressed that this is a scientific process. And so he would challenge that you just try this. What do you have to lose? And if you try it, then you can decide for yourself. We're not asking for uh, blind following. We're asking for intelligent, uh, sincere attempts at this scientific process. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the question. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, so I just wanted to like add on to this. So sure. is it the same thing like as you mentioned about the Manse Seva? So like it's the same thing, I believe. Like mm. it's scientific process, like mm. we can offer service through our mind as well, like, yes. although not physically. Yes, yeah, we can offer service in our mind, but if we have the means, then we should offer what we can according to our ability. So if we're very wealthy, then we can give some of that wealth Definitely. to Krishna. Yeah. If we're very impoverished, we can give whatever we can. And if for some reason we're in a situation we can't do any service, maybe if we're in a country where it's not legal, then we can offer in our mind. Okay. You answered my question. Sorry? You just answered my question. I answered your question. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Okay. Do you have anything else? Yes? Okay. Wait, Mike. You got something too? Okay. Don't take this. Can I just come in? Thank you. Thank you. What is the first one? Patram. What is Patram? Patram, Pushpam, Palam, Toyam. A leaf, a flower, fruit, wire. So the first one is a leaf. Thank you, Prabhupada. Like we offer Tosi leaves, for example. Can Krishna save everybody from the demons? That's a nice question. Yeah, let's give him a little applause. So you know superheroes, right? Spider-Man, Daredevil. Krishna is like the supreme superhero. So he can, he has all the power, he has all the intelligence. He has every ability possible. So he's, he's just better than everybody in every way, so he can beat everybody in every way. <laughs> he's just the best, that's why. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, anything else? Okay. Here, we can just pass this one. Oh, it's not so loud. <laughs> you said that Krishna is like 
the better than everybody and everything? Do, does the, do the demons try to kill him because they're jealous of him? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Is he ever snobby about it? Sorry? Is he ever snobby about it? Is he snobby, Krishna? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Let me do one more. We've got some intelligent children here. This is great. You want to ask something? Okay. We'll finish off with this. Um, is Krishna like um, Superman? Krishna is like Superman, yes. Does he shoot lasers at his eyes? He could. <laughs> I, I don't know if he ever has. Why not? He could. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you all very, very much for your kind attention. Thank you for coming. If you appreciated anything that I said, all the credit goes to Srila Prabhupada, so please kindly uh, thank him, read his books, we have them available right outside in the hallway as you need, and you will be transformed beyond belief if you take to reading his books, even one sentence every day, there's nothing like it. So, thank you all very much, Hare Krishna. Let's give one big round of applause. Thank you once again for the wonderful room for leading us into an interactive and very much engaging session. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. So just a couple of few announcements. As, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we, we did the Haman today to invoke auspiciousness and blessings for the upcoming festival of Ratyatra scheduled to happen on July 16, 17, along with the 12 hour kirtan on Friday of uh, July 15. So um, we do have a couple of sponsors for today, so we'd like to acknowledge them and uh, thank them for their uh, sponsorship. So we have Arvind Kumar and Pratyusha Mataji. I believe they are here. So we have a small gift. So we request for them to have a gift for them. Thank you so much, Prabhu and Mataji, for, for this gesture. Yes, and we also have another uh, sponsorship. This is from Mahabharata Prabhu for Vital Bhakta. Vital Bhakta recently celebrated his birthday last Monday. So we would like Vital Bhakta Prabhu to, to offer his garden for Vital Bhakta. We would like to chant the Manamantra prize for Vital Bhatta and Prabhu and Mahathri. So, one, two, three. Hare Krishna!